Uh, before I forget, there's not going to be a Hughes Diaries video next week because I'm away up in North Wales learning how to design regenerative farms for 10 days. That is my idea of a perfect summer holidays. Um, a lot of change has started to, to happen in the Wi-Fi garden. We've also had a little bit of rain, which has been nice. So here have chopped and dropped what were the field beans and the, the soil underneath is, is really, really nice. So it's a, a nice dark soil. Um, these are field beans that were planted, I think last September. Um, so quite early on, um, but the soil's lovely. Letting those break down, deciding what to put in next. I presume it's gonna be some kind of brassica. These Gaia soybeans looking lovely. Uh, they're kind of threatening to start flowering. Um, so yeah, excited to see what happens there. All sorts going on, random cabbage, because a lot of my garden is very random. And uh, yeah, many different things. So lots of development. Down here, this lovely pea structure here is now ready for harvesting. And I know a lot of people have really enjoyed it. It's very simple, just using bits of hazel to create a bit of an A-frame with a couple of ones in between. And then you just string some string, literally string, string, and uh, grow some peas. And it works really nicely. So yeah, definitely gonna do more of these next year. Um, right, I've already eaten at probably about 50 pea pods today. This is some lavender here, Hidcut lavender. It didn't really enjoy last year, but this year it's much happier. And every time I walk past it, I just have to have to just smell a bit because it smells amazing. I am shocked by how many hoverflies I've seen hanging about. This is, if you're a hoverfly, come to this lavender because everyone else is here. Um, and it's flowering. So some of you who might follow Sam, Sam recently did a, um, a reel on Instagram about creating a thyme salt. And we've seen this lavender and he's had the idea to make a lavender salt. So stay tuned for that recipe. Um, yeah, it's gonna be interesting. Tomatoes are coming on nicely. This here is pocketbook vine tomato. And it is definitely in the top three of the weirdest tomatoes out there. Essentially, it, it's a lot of cherry tomatoes that just fuse together and form these weird little shapes. Um, what I wanted to say, one of the things uh, you might have seen my last Hughes Diaries video was talking about just lack of rain, lack of water, etc. One is the share strategy that's been working really well for us in terms of water conservation. It's adding, we've buried soaker hoses a couple of inches deep and it's kind of like S shape underneath. And so turned it on earlier and all of the soil underneath is just nice and moist. The top is nice and dry. So that kind of dry surface can act a bit of an insulative layer um, but it means that the tomatoes are getting the moisture that they need and it just makes it nice and simple. Just another example of creating a nice kind of salt, a flower salt. These leek flowers are another perfect thing to try out. And um, Sam, are you all right making me a bunch of leek salt? Yes. Good. So on a recent volunteer day, we assembled all of these Vigo Garden circular beds and then, so the idea is out kind of over autumn and winter, gonna fill these up, and then each one is gonna have a different cut flower. And so the idea is you can like walk between and you can harvest a really nice bouquet of flowers um, from this space. So just a little bit of fun, but I thought I'd show you before, and then you can see an after about a year from now. So be patient. So I'm enjoying how this linear food forest is starting to come together a bit. So there's a black currant, probably about five days away from harvesting the first black currants. Slightly annoyed that I'm going to miss out on that, um, but I can't complain too much. I've had virus breeze. Sorry? You'll eat them. So the market garden area, just been keeping on top of it really. Um, just an extended vegetable garden in a sense. I'm, a, I'm always amazed by how, how I'm, doing, I'm, I'm eating peas. This, I just I just do it without even thinking. Mmm, tasty. So sweet corn's looking good, peas are looking good. Um, got some outdoor tomatoes which are getting there, starting to fruit, which is exciting. And I can't wait for like a few years time when a lot more of the perennials start to develop. I think I kind of underestimated how much 
time and effort and resources is needed for these terraces. And so what I'm going to do is a bit of a hybrid between perennials and annuals. And so I think it's going to turn into quite an interesting um, design with how the two integrate, but especially with maturity. We say this plum tree here, the Denbig plum, as it grows, how it will provide dapple shade below. Um, so yeah, just uh, something I'm a little bit excited about. So one thing that I found quite interesting, and of course we're going to return to the subject of peas, is that with this really dry weather, the harvests have been good, but the plants haven't been reaching their usual height. And so there were a ton of peas here, but the name of this variety is telephone peas, which can easily climb to like eight to 10 foot, which is, well, definitely taller than me, but it's taller than this. The idea was to create a bit of an archway, but we've had such a lack of rain, they haven't reached their full growing potential. However, even though these might have been watered once or twice during that really dry spell, they've still produced a huge abundance of peas. So moving forward, if I'm trying to create more of a drought resilient garden, I'm delighted to say that I, I get to include peas in that. Now I've grown curry plants for years and they're enjoyed by a lot of beneficial insects. Again, some nice hoverflies around here, but I don't actually know what to do with it. Like what is the point of a curry plant in a herb garden? So if you have any culinary ideas, I know I should have asked you Sam, but yeah, if you have any ideas on how to actually use this herb, um, I'd really appreciate that because otherwise it's, I don't know, it's just lovely. I, that's fair enough, but I would like to enjoy it somehow in the kitchen. Every year I make sure I try at least two or three new herbs that I've never grown before. One of those herbs for this year is Vietnamese coriander. And I've been quite blown away with how much growth. This has probably doubled in size in the last couple of weeks. Um, but yeah, it's, it's definitely got that, that noticeable kind of coriander smell, um, but it, it's, it's nice. I think one of the nice things about this, that I'm quite excited to see, because I'm not really sure about its growing habits, but unlike coriander, which can run to seed really quickly, I don't think that happens with Vietnamese coriander, um, which means you can get that coriander flavor. You can just plant it once and always have access to it during the growing season rather than forgetting to sow your succession coriander and then you no longer have access to the leaves. So yeah, give this a go. I, I bought this from Urban Herbs. I'm really, really happy with this. What's that thing coming over the fence? It's a runner bean plant. I've been kind of quite secretive about this secret garden, showing little things. Um, but yeah, we're gonna finish filming now because Sam and I, before I head off, need to film in here because I've managed to grow quite a bit of food in about four months. Um, so in the meantime, watch this video here. It shows you about 21 different crops that you can sow in the month of July. We are not, it's not over yet. So if you're feeling like you need to fill a load of gaps, watch this video and uh, we're gonna crack on Sam. <laughs>